The endothelial cells that line blood vessels are held together by adherence junctions containing the transmembrane adhesion molecule VE cadherin and the cytoplasmic adapter proteins P120, beta and alpha catenin. These junctions can be leaky in diseases such as atherosclerosis, but they are also transiently disrupted during normal physiological processes like angiogenesis or when leukocytes move from the bloodstream into infected tissues. The temporary remodelling of endothelial junctions in response to angiogenic or pro-inflammatory cytokines is a topic that interests Johan de Roy from the Hubrecht Institute in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Rho activity and, and forces in the actin cytoskeleton are important to remodel endothelial cell-cell junctions. And since we were interested in cell-cell junctions and how they respond to force and what the molecular complex is that does that, we thought that this would be particularly uh, interesting system to study this in. To investigate endothelial junction remodeling, de Roy and colleagues, led by Stefan Huveneers, initially looked at the dynamics of VE cadherin, which allowed them to distinguish two types of adherence junction in live endothelial cells. You can see that there are junctions that have actin bundles parallel to them, close and very thick but not really connected. And these junctions are dynamic but they don't actually really remodel. And then there are also junctions that have perpendicular actin bundles that actually connect to the junctions. And these junctions are much more dynamic and are really remodeling. These remodeling junctions, which the researchers termed focal adherence junctions, were also distinguished by the presence of the actin-binding mechanosensory protein vinculin, which is recruited to intercellular adhesions by binding to alpha-catenin, but which was nevertheless absent from stable endothelial junctions. Huvenirs et al. then looked to see what happened to focal adherence junctions in the presence of hormones that promote adhesion remodeling. With FEDGEF, you induce junction remodeling, so you, you see an increase in the number of these focal adherence junctions and an increase in the number of vinculin-containing structures. It's not very fast, but, but within an hour or a couple of hours, you can see that building. With TNF alpha, it, it takes much longer, but then these cells really start aligning and they form very strong actin bundles and at the interconnected spots, there's lots of vinculin there. And with Promin, it's really fast. Within minutes, these cells start pulling on their junctions uh, and, and you can see lots of vinculin going to the cell-cell junctions. Huveneers et al. then investigated whether focal adherence junctions are built from scratch during adhesion remodeling or whether they are formed by the rearrangement of cadherin and catenin molecules in pre-existing stable junctions. So we made a photoswitchable alpha-catenin tagged by the dendra protein and then when we switch alpha-catenin so that we know that we're still looking at the same molecules in that particular junction. We can see that they stick around while the junction makes a transition from resting to remodeling. Factors like VEGF and thrombin induce junction remodeling by activating the Rho GTPase to stimulate contraction of the actin and myosin cytoskeleton. To see whether actomyosin contractility was required for the formation of focal adherence junctions, Huveneers et al. blocked Rho signaling by inhibiting either Rho itself, its associated kinase ROC, or myosin 2. All of these inhibitions prevented the formation of focal adherence junctions in the sense that there was no vinculin visible and we couldn't find these perpendicular oriented junctions. We think it's the force in the contractile actin that connects to the junctions and that puts tension on the junctions and that recruits vinculin. Focal adherence junctions were kept under tension by their attachment to radial actin bundles. Uncoupling these adhesions from the cytoskeleton using either low doses of cytochalasin D or laser ablation released this pulling force, resulting in the rapid displacement of vinculin-containing junctional complexes. But what is vinculin's function at focal adherence junctions? Huveneers et al. couldn't simply deplete the protein by RNAi, as this would affect vinculin's functions elsewhere in the cell and reduce overall levels of actomyosin contractility. We decided we should abolish vinculin's binding site in focal adherence junctions, so we made an alpha-catenin that was structurally intact, but that lacked the capacity to recruit vinculin to cell-cell contacts. When Huveneers et al. expressed this alpha-catenin mutant in endothelial cells lacking wild-type alpha-catenin, they were surprised to find that focal adherence junctions still formed and connected to the actin cytoskeleton. 
uh, we, we would have expected maybe that Finkelen uh, played a role in, in, in making that connection, but that is apparently not the case. So what is the case is that thrombin results in a much wider opening of these junctions. Without Finkelen, vocal adherence junctions were pulled further apart in response to thrombin and took longer to return to their stable form, indicating that vinculin is normally recruited to reinforce these adhesions and help them resist the tension generated during junction remodelling. So apparently vinculin is making sure that these junctions are not breaking while they're opening and closing after thrombin. Vinculin contains an actin binding site itself so that it maybe enforces junctional actin binding. Uh, on the other hand, the other explanation is that vinculin recruits a third protein and maybe a fourth protein that, for instance, induce processes like actin polymerization on a time scale that then would reduce tension on these junctions. This is pretty speculative, but these are the things that we are thinking about. In addition to working out how vinculin reinforces focal adherence junctions under tension, De Roy and colleagues are also interested in investigating how this mechanosensory pathway affects junction remodeling in vivo. Can you manipulate this process? Can you manipulate the vinculin of catenin interaction? And can you maybe prevent a junctional leakage in, an, in, a, in the endothelium, in mouse models for junctional leakage problems? We'd also like to use this alpha catenin mutant that cannot recruit vinculin and therefore cannot participate in catenin mechanosensing in, in a model organism like, for instance, zebrafish to investigate what the consequence is on tissue development and tissue remodeling. In the meantime, you can learn more about the role of vinculin in endothelial junction remodeling in the paper by Huvenirs et al., published in the March 5, 2012 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Oh.